Hello, welcome back to another show. I'm Sid and today I'm going to be expanding on the topics covered in the previous video, which was iris and eyeball tracking in Spark AR Studio to include an animation element, which will, uh, when the user taps or interacts with the screen, grow the scale the eyes from zero to one. It's a pretty cool effect. Uh, still tracks nicely onto the eyes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over what I did in the previous video a little bit quicker and with a little less detail. If you haven't seen that video, I'd recommend checking it out first and then coming back here uh, so that we can get on with the actual animation portion. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you find any of the videos that I make helpful or useful in any way, consider liking, leaving a comment or subscribing because uh, it's helping me grow the channel much faster than I ever expected. I'm almost at 60 subscribers now in like six weeks, which is crazy. Uh, and I'm appreciative of every single one of you who's watching and enjoying the content that I'm trying to make. Yeah, so with that being said, let's pause this and create a new project and I'll get straight into showing you how this was done. Oh, and all the links to everything that I'm using, including this iris.fbx file, will be in the description below. So before you uh, leave a comment asking about it, check check first because I'm pretty sure if I remember it will be down there. Okay, so I'm going to zip through this first part where we add a face tracker to our scene. We're going to also add a mesh inside of that, nested, which we're going to add a material layer to. Now, we're going to call this layer invisible because we don't actually need it to be seen in any way. We're going to reduce the opacity down to 1%, 1% uh, as opposed to 0, so that these eyelids, which are part of the uh, mask, can be used as an occluder. For our eyes so that when we have them the eyelids sort of close around them and they're not stuck on top of the face uh yeah so now we've got that we're going to import our textures i have this snake eye and this iris.fbx file which will which doesn't seem to want to go in but it is there now so we're going to take this and we're going to drag it into our face tracker nested inside of the uh, face tracker but not nested inside the mesh okay uh, and now what we're going to do is open up our patch editor and we get started with that. So you'll drag our face tracker from the scene. We're going to drag that over here to the patch editor. Creates these three patches for face finder, face select, and face tracker. I'm just going to tidy them up a bit. And then drag from face. This is an eyeball patch. So this is an eyeball filter. So we're going to add the eyeball patch. And then under iris, we're going to create patches for the rotation and 3D position, which we're going to connect up here to the left iris position and the left eyeball rotation. Now you can see it's nicely tracking onto my face. It's still a little bit big, but don't worry about that. We'll get to it in a second. Uh, we'll fix all of that. But for now, I will come over and adjust this slightly. So we'll add our snake eye texture. I changed the color to white because if you see, it's much brighter. I just wanted the bright color. Uh, and I'm also going to make it physically based or standard. I think standard works pretty well. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this one left. And I'm going to call this one right. And I'm pretty much going to do the exact same thing again on this side. So we've got our 3D rotation here and our 3D position, which we're going to connect up to the right slots on the patch. Now you see I have these two giant snake eyes which are both bigger than my eyes uh, sticking out of my head looks a bit bad right now but that's okay we're gonna fix it because now we've got this uh, in the previous video we would have scaled it down here uh, we would have just said oh we want this to be 0.77 like we we'll scale it down by about a third and then it more or less fits inside of the iris but this time we're not gonna be controlling it here so I'll undo that and we'll get back to these giant googly eyes what we're going to be doing instead is we're going to create our interaction. So we're going to double tap on the patch editor to bring up the menu and search for, in this case, a screen tap. I'm using a screen tap to demonstrate on the screen, but uh, there are other options. I'd probably make a video about that after this one, going into some maybe like blink to change, things like that. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, screen tap, which we're going to connect up to a switch. Oh, let me just show you what switch is. Switch is a toggle, so it's an on off state basically. And we're going to connect that up to our oh no, uh, pulse. <laughs> yeah, so the pulse is something that will be triggered when we tap on the screen. 
and we turn that on we'll connect that to our animation so you're going to add an animation at this point which currently is playing to, for one second so this uh, on the on the on the other one you'll see when I tap the screen it's a one second animation to just ooh, boop big small whatever I'm kind of losing track again about halfway through all these videos I tend to lose track of what I'm doing so I appreciate anyone who makes it this far and then continues to watch and also I'm aware of how stupid I look, <laughs> I look right now with these weird Mordors on my head what's that guy's name Mount Doom Mount Doom man Mr. Mr. Doom yeah anyway I've fallen way off topic here so we've got our screen tap which we've connected up to a switch and when the switch is flipped when the screen when the screen is tapped the switch is flipped which activates this pulse which is sent to our animation loop which we're going to connect to a transition this allows us to choose uh, the change that we want to happen when we start our animation so in this case it will be going from a scale of 0 to a scale of uh, 1 or whatever it is that we set our eyes to be the final size of uh, now we need to connect them up so if we come up to our left and right and we control select uh, we can hit the scale button here which will add both of these patches for our left and right eye connect these up to our transition and you'll see both eyes disappear now I'm going to adjust, I'm going to simulate the touch on this device and when I tap the screen the eyes grow from zero scale to one now you can see this happening uh, in, the, in the pulse you can see the screen is tapped the switch is flipped the pulse goes which begins the animation. Now you can also, and I recommend, connecting this, the on off switch to this reverse of the animation, which will allow you to tap it again and reverse it. So you can go grow the eyes and shrink the eyes. Uh, if you don't have this, if you delete this, then they'll grow, but they won't go anywhere. They'll be stuck on the screen. So if you do want to be able to reverse this effect, make sure that you have your on off switch connected to your reverse on the animation now the last thing I'm going to do is show you just quickly how to scale these down because now that now that we've got this as a patch you can't actually edit these these numbers anymore uh, so we're gonna to have to do it down here inside of our transition patch so as you can see the animation itself starts at zero which is a scale of nothing so it just is invisible and it scales up to a full size which in this case is one now before I scaled down to about 0 0.77 because uh, that's about where these irises are like it's pretty close you could probably go a little bit smaller but I think it works fine uh, yeah so the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to our uh, face mesh the invisible one that we have because when we blink right now these eyes are kind of all over the place and we're going to come up to our face mesh and it works maybe a little bit if I zoom in we're going to look straight into the camera lens and then pause so that we have a nice clean plate to work with and then what we're going to do is adjust the Z axis on this just pull it forwards ever so slightly until there's a little bit of coverage you can you can test it out you can see how well it works but the blinking is a little bit better and if I pull it forwards even like oh no I've, I messed that one up that all works but yeah you get what I'm saying pause it adjust the z-axis so that the eyelids are slightly in front of uh, of the eyes that you've set below you can even do it on layers if you want you can add a new layer and make this the foreground but that's not too uh, important of a step but yeah that's pretty much the entire effect tap to grow your eyes um, uh, you can also switch this out so you can switch this out for any texture I could add in the eight balls and we'll do it with that like it's it's a versatile technique. You can play around with it. You can do some cool stuff. Here I am with able eyes. But yeah, so that's the entire video. Uh, sorry I don't make these as often as I want to. Uh, now that there are people watching, I feel a little bit more pressure. Like I'm kind of obliged to respond to people's comments and make more tutorials, which I do want to do. It is fun and I'm enjoying it. But part of me is like getting a little bit stressed about it now. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, if you liked the content uh, or found anything that I uh, said today helpful, maybe leave a comment, let me know what you thought, 
uh, let me know what you think of my thumbnails too, because I'm, I like, I think they convey information well, but I'm not a fan of the colours. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's a couple awful looking colours in there. So any recommendations on how I can improve the thumbnails would be awesome. Uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I guess I'll see you next time. Oh, I do want to make an uh, another third part to this where I show you how to blink to change. So. Uh, we'll be able to alternate between, for example, the snake eyes and the eight ball just by blinking and that will include all of the previous stuff that we've done. Oh, so everything including this face tracker and the iris position and then this animation, we're just going to add a little bit more onto that so that we can uh, blink and change the uh, texture on the iris. But yeah, I've gone on way too long now. This video was nine minutes, uh, two minutes ago, surprisingly. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.